On this episode of Delivering Marketing Joy, I talk with Bill Petrie of Brandivate on why small is the new big and why you should ask for help. Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Delivering Marketing Joy, the web show. I'm your host, Kirby Hosman, and joining me today is a good friend of mine I've known for quite some time and uh, the owner, CEO, uh, chief guy in charge of a relatively new company called Brandivate, uh, Bill, Pre- Bill Petrie. Thanks so much, Bill. I appreciate you joining us. Kirby, thanks for having me, and gosh, we have known each other a long time. I don't want to embarrass either one of us by saying how long. That's right, but it has been a little while. Hey, um, so uh, jumping right in, I mean, one of the things I know about you is you've been a part of both large and small, uh, relatively small companies. You've started, you've been with big uh, promotional products companies, and you've started uh, distributors from scratch. The question I was thinking about for you What is it um, that small companies, in maybe in the promotional side, but in any business, what do small companies need to do better in order to grow large? And then what advantages do small companies have over large companies? Uh, Interesting question. You know, large companies have some very obvious advantages in terms of uh, they're going to have buying power, right? They're going to have more financial resources. Uh, to do things that maybe smaller companies can't do. And maybe that's in terms of of people resources or actual financial resources. But but smaller companies do have advantages and and it does help them grow, uh, especially in the promotional products industry. Uh, We always talk about how I think what everybody goes to when they think of smaller companies is they can be nimble and flexible. And And that's certainly true, but I don't think that's enough. Especially in the promotional products industry, the real challenge is, you know, you have 24,000 distributors of promotional products selling the same or similar products from the same or similar suppliers to same the same or similar clients. So how do you stand out in a sea of people doing essentially the same thing you're doing? And I think smaller companies have an advantage because they can create a truly compelling value proposition that you really know by heart. It's what you do and what does it mean for the client? Because it's more than just delivering a catalog that's the size of the old Sears wish book, if anybody remembers those, and saying, I can put your logo on anything in that uh, book. It's, for what I, my perspective, it's small companies can help clients turn those ideas into experiences. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so because of that flexibility and being nimble, small companies have a more, uh, an easier time doing that. So if you can articulate what your vision is and how it's going to benefit your client, that's going to win your business. And I think the second one Kirby would be smaller businesses have the opportunity to drive change in ways a large business simply cannot. You know, too often I think we both see it. There's companies that do things the way they've always done them because it's comfortable and I like doing it that way. And I did all these things to get me to this level of success. Right. And that's good. But I think to drive change is key. You know, small companies have that advantage. You know, I'm a company of one right now. Well, me and my dog. But (laughs) when I want to do something, I look over here and look over there. And we all generally agree with each other. (laughs) So I I can – if I have a, a, uh, a whim, something I want to do, I can do it. And if it's a mistake, I can stop doing it. I don't have a big machine telling me, yes, no, proceed with caution, slow down, what are you doing? I don't have that. And a lot of small companies in the industry don't have that, and that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I like to act on those impulses. I think it's, I think it's important. So historically, you know, small companies are the ones that really shift change. They, they find needs that don't exist. They deliver a new or an additional value, or they create an easier way to do things. So the two two answers to your question, Kirby, it's one is standing out from the crowd, that finding that voice, and then finding vehicles to cr- clearly articulate it, and then second, driving that change. And sometimes it's even what's old is new again. I for the last 
uh, six months to a year, I have been handwriting notes left and right because nobody does it anymore. Right. So just right. simple things like that to change how people view you is, is a big thing. Yeah, and, and, and to your point, one of the things that uh, that I think sometimes people are crippled by by trying to drive that change is they feel like each change is forever. And you, to your point, you just you change back or you change, you, you, you stop doing whatever it is that's not working. So that's great. That, that's why pencils have erasers. <laughs> I love it. So so one of the things we've talked uh, before, it, one of your passions is helping people. Um, and you know, I, like I hear that from a lot of successful people. They want to help other people be successful. Why do you think um, serving others, helping others is so important to success? Well, first of all, you're assuming I'm successful, which I appreciate, <laughs> I, which yeah, is absolutely. outstanding. You know, we all started out, whatever industry we're in, not knowing anything. Whether you graduated from college, went to a trade school, it really doesn't matter. You, you, know, you learn things in school and then real life happens. The real world kind of, kind of asserts itself. So I always use the promotional products industry. The analogy I use is that of cave drawings. We've seen those cave drawings where people would, that's how they would share stories from generation to generation. They would draw, you know, somebody uh, shooting a bow and arrow at, at an antelope or whatever it may be. That's how people learn in this industry, and it's very interesting. Uh, people assume that, oh, they'll just know it. They'll just pick it up by osmosis. I had so many people in my career, and I could name, I'd start naming some, but I'd leave so many out. I've had so many people help me in this industry get to where I'm going to be, from learning industry pricing co co codes, uh, writing quotes, pricing things appropriately, knowing how the little theater of presentation when you're showing somebody an idea, all of those things, it would be selfish of me not to pay that back and not to give that back. So I really believe it's important to give it back. I wear a, I wear a pay it forward bracelet everywhere I go. Um, I've handed them out. I just really feel it's so important to give back. And, and honestly, Kirby, and I know you do a lot of this too, Helping people is, is it's, it's more than, sometimes it's just mentoring, sometimes it's just giving sound advice, but it's an addiction. Mm -hmm. and, I and it's a good one. Yeah. I find that I thrive on it, and I get so much more back when I give than when I don't. And so I really believe in paying it forward. You know, as Paul McCartney said, in the end, uh, the love you, you take is equal to the love you make. And I really do believe that. And anytime you can quote Paul McCartney, I think it's a good thing. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm not going to quote Ringo. I'm not going to quote Ringo Starr and Octopus's Garden. So I'm going to go with Paul on this. One. <laughs> I like it. So um, it occurs to me that uh, someone doing what you do, um, one of your challenges is, I, I would guess, is that in in order for you to help somebody, they have to admit they need help. And uh, whenever you're dealing with people in sales, entrepreneurs, I mean, a lot of us, and I'm one of those people where you're like, I have an, I have an attitude like, if it's to be, it's up to me. I don't need anybody's help. Right. Get out of my way. I'll do it. Um, and that's good and bad, right? Um, mm. And so I guess why is it so hard for us to admit we need help? And I guess you know the follow-up is why should we do it anyway? Right, and I, I think the answer is for everybody, it's really different. You know, some people don't want to be judged as weak. I don't want someone to think I need their help to be successful or to handle this particular problem. And for others, it's maybe they don't want to be rejected, you know, I, 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 or, or it's I don't want to bother them right now and, and get in their way. Or, or like what you said, hey, I can handle it. I've, I've done it so far before. I can handle it. It's no big deal. My first manager in this industry taught me, I'll never forget it, you know, we all have those little seminal moments in our careers and in our lives, and in my career life, he told me, Bill, the four most important words in the English language, I need your help. And he was absolutely right. And he was using it more from a sales perspective and cold calling, going to a receptionist at, at a, in a building and saying, I need your help. Can you tell me who's in charge of ordering promotional products, so on and so forth. But I will tell you, I, if someone asks me for help, I don't think I've ever said no. And I don't think anybody I know has ever said no. Mm -hmm. So I think 
it's just realizing that as a larger society, certainly, but as a small community in the promotional products world, helping each other out makes us all stronger. Mm -hmm. And it's not a position of weakness when people ask for help. It's really a position of confidence and strength that say, you know what, I know these certain things over here, but there are things that I don't know. And I think the person I'm talking to might be able to help me. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. That's, that's great advice. So we've hit your three. Now it's your turn to ask me a question. This is the part that always makes me nervous. So I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do my best. It should. I was going to ask you something like, what's the opposite of milk? Right. But <laughs> I'm going to ask you, you know, you, I, like I said, I Kirby, I've known you almost 15 years and you've really embraced the value proposition of delivering marketing joy. And I absolutely love it. Oh, what event or events uh, brought you to the value proposition and, and what's the best demonstration of a client really embracing that joy? Wow, great question. Um, so, you know, I think it was an evolution that got us there. Um, you know, I, I think, again, you know me. Um, and if you follow us online, you know we're a pretty positive group. We like to have fun. That's and I've said for a long time, A, I think we are in a fun business, and B, I want to create a place where I want to come to work each morning. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, by that, I mean, we, we're, we're watching funny videos that some might deem inappropriate on a regular basis. We do, we do fun stuff here because I think we should. Um, but it's interesting. I, I was in the business for a long time, and uh, we do a customer appreciation event. And a couple years ago... It, it, it the the event had gotten bigger and bigger, and so we had suppliers sending in boxes in advance of the show. And so every day, new stuff was coming in. And despite the fact we sell this uh, these promotional items for a living, every day it was like the whole staff gathered around when the UPS man come came in, and it was like, oh my gosh, it's like a little bit of Christmas. Um, <laughs> and 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 it was that was kind of the the inspiration. I'm like, okay, everybody, if we do our job right, everybody feels this way. Um, and so that's where the, the idea came from delivering marketing joy. And I think, you know, kind of the, on the other side of it, what gives me the, the, what gets me excited is, you know, we do work hard at trying to tell that story. And so when clients come back to me and say, Hey, that, see this, this is a piece of marketing joy. And they start to quote the message back to me. I feel like maybe we've done something right. So I think that's, that, fantastic. yeah, that's the best. So. Well, hey, Bill, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time and being a part of the show. Uh, good luck on the new thank Endeavor, uh, Brand of Eight, which is thank exciting. Um, I'm excited about it. Yeah, you should. I love the, your logo here. That's awesome. Always. <laughs> Always. And uh, again, good luck, and thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thanks, Kirby. I appreciate it. Take care. All right.